Well, that's a long story, but I'll give you the quick version of what I'm doing. So, January 5th, 2011, launched a project called $10 and a laptop.com. Started with only $10 and my laptop. The purpose is, is to essentially show you a behind the scenes look at what it takes for me to build my life through entrepreneurship. So if you woke up tomorrow and you had absolutely nothing, what would you do? That's what I'm doing. So not using any of my existing financial resources or relationships, I'm demonstrating what it takes for me to look completely forward and, and build a life through entrepreneurship. Along the way, traveling to all 50 states, interviewing 501 entrepreneurs who are also building their life through entrepreneurship. And the whole idea is, is to provide examples for aspiring entrepreneurs um, so that they can take that leap and, and bring their ideas uh, out into the world and, and do what they want to do through entrepreneurship. So there's two main lessons that I've learned as I've gone through a significant transition in my own life. So I started out very successful early on, uh, started my first business at 22, did very well financially, had great relationships, everything seemed like I was on top of the world. 25 diagnosed with a life-threatening illness that required a kidney transplant a short time later. Coming out of that, I learned two major things. The first one was that, that I built my life around accomplishments and achievements. And I realized that I have a much more fulfilling life if I focus on meaning, meaning, a meaningful life and fulfillment out of that. And so what I did the second time around is I focused on relationships, community, and ways in which I could serve instead of ways in which I could just achieve more or accomplish more. And I look at Detroit as, as something in a very similar position. The people that I've connected with so far in Detroit have been very much about a sense of community, a sense of partnership, a sense of uh, joint leadership, co-leadership, and really creating the environment that people want to live in and work in in Detroit. And the second thing I learned is you can't look back, you have to look forward. Uh, right after my transplant, I went through a, um, a major bout of depression, and I also went through a significant financial downturn. And at first, I was trying to get my old life back. And what I realized was is that I was never going to get that life back because I had fundamentally changed and my environment around me had fundamentally changed. But there was plenty of opportunity looking forward. And so the moment I decided to stop trying to get back to my life that I used to have and start looking forward at the opportunities, things started to show up and I started to connect with new people and I was able to rebuild better than ever before in, in many areas of my life. And, and that's what I'm bringing to this whole journey that I'm on right now, is the sense that you can put your, you can just start looking forward and look at opportunities. Start where you are, look forward, and you can make it happen. Well, a couple of things. Number one, I think community is incredibly important. If you, if you try to play on an island, well, I don't care if it's a business or just your personal life, you will most likely struggle because you isolate yourself and then you get caught up in your own head, number one, and then you don't have the, the community and resources to help you get where you want to go. So the sense of community is incredibly important to get yourself going in the right direction. When I launched this <clears throat> project, I started not using any of my existing relationships. That's very challenging. And so the first thing I did was work at building relationships with people that I wanted to hang out with, people that might be able to help me, people I might be able to help. So one, I would say start with a sense of community. And the second thing is I would say find something that, that is purposeful and meaningful and focus on that. You know, I think too often we, we focus on what we're passionate about, but passion is great, but, but purpose is much stronger. And you don't have to know your purpose to live a life with purpose. And so what I would do is I would do kind of an inventory of what do I find incredibly meaningful and where can I go to, to find a community that also thinks that's incredibly meaningful. And usually when you start there, <clears throat> things will start unfolding for you. Well, you can, you can find ways in which you have meaningful experiences. So meaningful experiences make up a meaningful life. And so if you focus on how can I create a meaningful experience today, how can I connect with a community that also thinks that's meaningful, you start to have small meaningful experiences. And enough small meaningful experiences start to create a life of purpose. 
You start doing things with purpose. You start saying, hey, I'm, I really find this important. I really find this valuable. And so do others. Let's make it better. Let's, let's make it more friendly for others to get involved. Let's make it more opportunity so that others can participate. Whatever it might be, you start to create small, meaningful experiences. And then that begins to create a much larger body of work of a meaningful life. And so you don't have to say, hey, I, my purpose on this planet is to do this one thing. I'm going to put everything I have into that. If you're, if you're not in that place, then start with what is a meaningful experience I can create today? And then those small, meaningful experiences begin to build up a body of work of a purposeful life. Easily the sense of community. There is, before I got here, people in Detroit were reaching out to me um, uh, in, in incredible ways. I mean, almost overwhelming for me in the generosity and graciousness of, of the people in the community of saying, hey, when you get here, look me up. Feel free to stop by here. We'd love to uh, have you come hang out. And it's not really, you know, the thing that I've picked up on about Detroit is, is there's a true sense of people who just care about Detroit and care about the community of Detroit and, and want to create meaningful experiences for themselves. And what's interesting is, is it's not about saving Detroit. It's not about um, how are we going to fix this. It's really just about, hey, I love Detroit. I love my friends in Detroit. Let's do this or let's do that and let's create an experience for other people to enjoy it too. And it's been very easy for me to just show up on the doorstep, if you will, and be completely invited in with open arms to participate and join in.